What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of My Hero Academia Season 6. And oh my god, what an episode this was. Another banger episode, man. We finally got some Hawks' backstory, which is nice. Because you guys know, if you guys have been watching my reviews for a while for Season 6, I've mentioned how I would how I would love to see a Hawks movie focus on his backstory and everything if it wasn't already covered in, in the manga, which, well, we got that answer. But honestly, which I would say now there's no point in making a Hawks movie, but you could still make a Hawks movie if you really wanted to, you know, expand more on his backstory, show him training to become the number two hero in that uh, in whatever the safety commission had him in the training he was doing on. Uh, you know, you go there, this training, maybe expand more on his father, how he got how he got caught by Endeavor, him, and you could also maybe have the general plot really just being Hawks trying to look for his mom because, you know, she left the house as we saw in this episode. There's still a lot to know, but at this point I'm just pitching a Hawks movie to you guys, but that would still be cool to see a Hawks movie, man. That would be cool. But anyway, uh, this episode was amazing, guys. Of course, the next episode preview on the Todoroki family. That episode is going to be absolutely legend legendary. You bet your ass that will get the reaction. This episode and that episode will both probably get a double reaction. Trip. This episode will definitely get a double reaction for Endeavor and Hawks. And next we will probably get two just because it's the Todoroki family and everything. That should be legendary with the dubcast when that episode airs. But a couple other things you guys I want to mention real quick that I want to talk about. Uh, one, I finally actually purchased two he uh, heroes, or, or uh, once Justice 2, I'm about to say two heroes. Uh, once Justice 2, it was on sale on PSN. Picked it up, grabbed the season pass because that was on sale as well. I wanted to originally get the deluxe edition, but my dumbass didn't buy it fast enough, and that one ended up going back to its full price uh, before I could buy the sale for that one. But the main game was still on sale with the season pass, so I bought that. It's currently installed on my, on my PS4 right now. Uh, I bought it actually a couple days ago, and it should have been finished, but for whatever reason, when I'm at the dorms, which you know, guys, I'm back at the dorms now, the internet just does not refuses to work on my PS4. It's very finicky on it. Sometimes it'll connect just fine. Other times, just craps out, just refuses to connect for days on end. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about my PS4 that doesn't like the internet, or the internet doesn't like my PS4. But that's just the thing. Either way, it's almost uninstalling. So if you guys haven't seen new footage, if you guys haven't seen footage of Hawks or Udrock in the review this time, then you guys know I got. I was able to play and get some new footage. If not, next week you guys will definitely be seeing some new footage. Either way, man. So yeah, looking forward to finally starting to play that and get some more footage for you guys. But one th other thing that I want to talk about real quick that I want to mention real quick is that one thing that actually got pronounced uh, a couple weeks ago for the next episode is that uh, one of the key animators that's going to be working on that episode, uh, I'm slipping on the dude's name, but he does the key visuals for Hirawaka and for all the for all the key visuals for all the anime. And I think he also does the character design as well. Basically, he is the guy that you get for the key. If you want the key animation to look extra crispy, to look exactly like how it does the manga, he is your guy, and he's going to be working the next episode apparently. So. So, yeah, prepare for some banger-looking key animation next week. That should be awesome as well. But, yeah, either way, guys, let us jump right into the actual episode. So we start the episode off right with Hawks' backstory. And first thing first, I gotta say is I love the look of this house. I'm jumping a little ahead right now, but I overall, but I love the look of Hawks' house. It looks like complete shit. I love the, like, shit brown, like, color grade they use, man. You see trash all over the goddamn place, man. I really dig the look of Hawks' house, man, if you could even call this beaten down shit a house, but overall, I like the look. Anyway, we see Hawks looking over, watching the TV as we see him, as we see him when he's safe all night, and that power plant thing that we see he's going to watch a bunch of times. Now, interesting thing about this. Is this, I don't know if I mentioned this in my reaction to the episode, but I did kind of wonder if the footage they were using here were reusing the footage from season four. You guys, you guys remember the first episode of season four, which was a uh, filler recap episode. It had this guy that was saved by All Might at that power plant. And because I noticed when the angle was different and he looked like him, I was kind of curious they reused that footage from season four in this episode. And from what I've seen on Twitter, it looks like they did indeed, they did indeed reuse this footage from season four. I just thought that was kind of interesting. They're actually reusing that footage here. And it would admit that it would made it wouldn't work with the timelines and everything so then we see another we see some more news footage this time of endeavor fighting this giant elephant guy and you know he's like and i love i, I love he has his own one liner after the fight where he says you will you lost because i because you came up against me man and hawks mentions that the only time he ever saw heroes were on the other side of tv he didn't think that they were real he thought them as separate from reality this is when we cut over to Hawks' house, if you want to call it that, and where he's and where his dad's like, "What you go for, huh? What 
bitch. Who did you sell? Why? Why'd you leave? Did you go to sell me out? You're like the subtitles actually written like did ya? Which makes me kind of wonder if when this episode airs with the dub cast and like I don't know two weeks or I think that's where the dub's at. I think I'm not sure. But when this episode airs with the dub cast, I do wonder if they are if that means that we're gonna if they're gonna, if, he, if that he's gonna have a southern accent in the dub. I'm gonna it's gonna that's gonna be something I'm looking out for when the dub episode this airs. But yeah. Anyway, so he's kind of telling him, like, where'd he go? And he kind of starts to beat on him a little bit. And Hawks tells him that his wings were tingling a little bit. And that he saw money, something happened in town. But it stopped and he came home before he got back. And, he, and then he keeps going on, like, don't you talk to anyone? Don't you leave the house? Don't you do anything? And so then we see Hawks' mom uh, tell them that the TV isn't working anymore. And like I mentioned before, you see bags and bags of trash everywhere in this fucking house. Like, this house is covered to the brim in trash. There are trash cans, trash bags. You see, like, like discarded, like, beer beer cans or whatever the fuck. Like, bro, this house is a fucking pigsty, bro. Like, <laughs> like how did it get this bad, bro? Like, like, there's nobody just, like, bro, has it that much to clean out the stuff, bro? Like, it's honestly... Like, this isn't livable, bro. Like, who, how can you live like this, bro? It's honestly insane, bro. This is how uh, Hawks grew up. So he tells her, so he tells her to shut up and hurry up and find another job. This scene I thought was kind of weird where we see Hawks grab, like, these random, like, wooden block these like blocks of wood and he like puts them down i'm assuming there's like maybe a crack in the in the floor and he's just trying to hold cover it up don't really know what he was doing grabbing that bot for what that whole part was about so he keeps so he mutters to himself about like oh if only i hadn't relied on toby's court no if only he hadn't been born which i'm assuming he's referring to hawks so and then we get more narrative hawks saying that that because both because of course because of what happened with his dad killing someone over some over small amount of money and his mom hiding him they were both broken and he just bore hope that he wouldn't turn out like them. So then uh, we cut over to when Hawks' his mom tells him that 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 he that his dad or there, that his dad was captured by Endeavor. And, and now this thing, now this part I thought was interesting, where as she tells him that Hawks says in that instant fiction become reality, someone who I only saw TV, a hero really existed and his and his endeavor plush he starts to light up i'm assuming to represent that fic that fiction had finally become reality at least to hawk that hawk the heroes were indeed real and that he was saved by endeavor maybe also show up like this is when he like when this is when endeavor became his favorite hero now interesting scene thing about this scene this is something i saw on twitter right after i finished up the episode and you know this is uh, i thought it was interesting is that in the manga actually what happened was not only did endeavors um, not only did hawk's endeavor or plushy light up, but it looks like it also came to life as well and actually started to run away from Hawks a little bit, which I thought was it, which I thought was interesting. She tells them they have to leave and that the cops will probably come after him because she's scared that she'll face punishment for hiding her dad. So that so they end up leaving and we cut to them when they're it looks like to be inside a subway station or something. And Hawk suggests that they go to police while his mom just tells him he doesn't care what he does, just get them some money. And says, why do you have those wings? Why were you born? We get some more narration from Hawks saying that if he did use fierce wings, he could easily do what his mother asked him. And that's when we cut over to when, I'm assuming the safety commission, met with Tomei and Tomei, uh, Hawks' mom, and him, and told him, you know, wanted to convince them to get Hawks into their program so he could become a special hero. They say they'll erase any connection you have with Tomiki, and then we get to the scene that we already saw where the guys talk to Hawks and tell him, like, you'll, your name, Kage, you will forget from the same you, the train will be hard. Will you be okay? And he's like, Well, like, can I be a hero who beats up bad guys like him? Can I make them a bar like blah blah blah? Like, that's our sense. So then we get cut over to a best cheese be like, Yo, Hawks, yo, Hawks, you alive there, bro? <laughs> He literally asked, he literally tells him that he could tell if he was asleep or dead, <laughs> which I thought was, which I thought was, and I can't really blame the man, because given the injuries he's sustained, you probably could look at like, bro, are you alive? <laughs> I just thought that was funny. So we find out that Hawks, I guess, I assume due to his injuries, has to speak through his phone. Like, I'm assuming the man, how this works is that his mask he is wearing, given the White House wires, is connected to his phone, and that, and what we, and that there's like a speaker inside of it, and that's how he's able to talk. 
at least for right now. And I know I mentioned this in my review last week and throw it on top of the next episode free, but I gotta mention it again. The car best genius trucks straight up looks like a Batmobile, bro. Can we all agree that this straight up looks like a Batmobile? I'm not the only one that's saying that sees it, right? Anyway, best genius tells Hawks that if it wasn't for the technology of the central hospital, he would still be wandering, he would still be wandering the, the halls of death. And then we finally figure out how the hell did best genius did Hawks fake best genius's death? How did he do it? And we find out that he went over under a surgery to be in a state of temporary death. And thanks because it, because he was technically dead and it was his real body, that's what he used to get Dobby to give him his uh, to convince him that that that, that, that that's what work. Now this scene I thought was pretty cool. I thought this was directed really well. Is that as they're driving, we actually get to see flashbacks back to season five of when Hawks and Dobby when he showed Hawks the body on the windshield of the car, which I thought that was a pretty clever way to like show a, a flashback by using the windshield of the car to show the shots. I thought that was really cool so then we find out that what happened after he checked the body you know made an id and everything is that he suggested that they that they that they that they should preserve the body to i guess assuming to turn it into a no move so best genius's body was preserved at one of their facilities and then hawks revived him secretly when it was best for them and so then as they're driving Hawk, then uh best genius then decides to take a full like 300 to 360 degree u-turn and hawks like yo bro what's going on here and he says he found a fried spot and we see what's and we see like these random like petty thieves going in there you know wrecking up like this shopping district he calls himself the glutton god which <laughs> that was a ridiculous name but uh, given the way they dress is i guess it fits so best genius comes in there with it fires some wire uh, some fiber wires from his batmobile wraps them up and captures them of course as always he's gotta fix up his hairline you know make fix up his hair make sure everything's all good and this scene, I really enjoy, man. Like, one thing I've been loving about season six, and this has kind of been a thing with, like, the last couple of seasons that I've been really enjoying. I love how Horikoshi has been showing up the, um, the destruction or the downfall, I think is a better term, of Hero Society as we start to see the foundations of it really start to show the cracks its foundation and people lose trust in them and we start to see the cracks. I've been really enjoying how Horde has been doing this, especially season six, but he's also been doing this a couple times in previous seasons as well. But season six, he's been like really doing this and I always love these scenes. So, you know, everyone's cheering like, yeah, yeah, best genius, number, th number three hero, let's go. And... Best Genius asked them, like, where are the cops and the heroes that are assigned to the jurisdiction? And the police have their hands full with, of course, all the escaped prisoners. But the heroes, the heroes that are stationed here, they didn't want the smoke. They did not want the smoke. And they ended up all quitting once the public started to criticize them. And then this I thought was interesting. Now, at first, I thought this dude was, like, going to be, like, a villain. We might see later on that's, like, built up some gadgets in his garage or something. Like, we see that in Marvel Comics or whatever. Or someone that was, like, wronged by a hero. Like, that's also what they're doing now in the Miles book, actually. They recently, they just introduced in the second issue. There's, like, woman that's, like, that looks like he's going like, to go in Alpha Revenge on Miles or hero of certain Marvel or um, um, heroes. And, like, built her own gear and everything. Also, her design is really fucking cool. But, uh, but I'm getting sidetracked now. But I thought it was going to be a situation like that with this dude, as he says that heroes who needs him. We see that he has some sort of like support gear or some support device on his arm. And so Best Genius and says that he'll send out some of his sidekicks to this area. And this I thought was pretty cool, where we see, where we really get to see how much people have started to distrust heroes. Where the where we see a where we see a shot of the crowd, and it more or less goes to black and white, except the people that are actually smiling and happy that he's there. Without everyone was only one, two, three, four, five, six people told out the entire group of the crowd, while that everyone else is frowning at them with their arms crossed, still giving them giving them the stink eye because they don't trust heroes more. And I thought this was a really nice shot. And Hawk says that the distrust of heroes getting worse and worse by the day. So then we get over, so then we cut over to where I'm assuming Hawks and his mom are staying at. As we see the name on the plate is called Ukai, which I'm assuming is like their new alias, at the very least for his mom. And that's when we find out that her mom isn't there and that she indeed skipped town and she left this note for Hawks, which 
if there's one thing that I kind of wish we did that I didn't really that I wish we saw in this episode. I don't know, maybe this was like in the manga and Bones cut it. I wish we got to see a picture of what Hawks' mom looks like now because we obviously saw her when she was at her lowest point. You know, li you know hiding Hawks' dad. You know, living in that shit, in that shack, in that shack house. I really wish what she, we got what she looked like now. Obviously, be a lot more happier. You know, her with ha her son Hawks supporting her and everything. I would have liked to see what she looks like now. You know, maybe her a picture of her smiling or something like. Oh, did anyone else feel this way? Is it just me? <laughs> I wish we got a picture of what Hawks' mom looks like now. Cause I'm curious to know what she looks like now. But either way, she would find out that, that that some that some guys came in there to threaten her. She told him about him and his dad, and that and that because of that she doesn't want to be more trouble to him. So she has left the house, and then she tells him that she is very proud of him. So Hawks figured that that most likely that there was a leak. It would have been mom and. <laughs> And then we get to best genius. I swear to God, does everything have to be a fucking, like, jeans analogy? He says, it's tough. As tough as getting into a pair of skinny jeans. <laughs> to be fair, he's not wrong, though. Like, yeah, you, I'm sure, we, like, I, I used to wear skinny jeans a couple of before I moved over to the athletic fit of Levi's. And they can get pretty tough sometimes, man. But, <laughs> and of course, I'm sure we all see some videos on Twitter of women with big asses trying to put on skinny jeans. I'm sure we've all seen that on our feet once or twice. So the man isn't wrong, but still, I just find funny how everything has to be a fucking jeans reference with it. Or a jeans analogy, if you will. But anyway, Hawk says he feels relieved that when he would, that when the connection was to, when it was a race between him and his dad, that also meant what happened with his mom. He abandoned her instead of saving her, and his own his own actions just came back to bite him in the ass. And it's not really something you can say in this current situation. The safety commission is basically is basically over by this point. So there's no one left to give him orders. He now feels. He now, he's no one, though, no one left tying him down. He is now free. And then we get this flashback to when Hawks' mom actually gave Hawks that Endeavor plush. Which, you know, that was, that was cool. That was nice to see that. I, I do wonder, does Hawks still have it? I'm genuinely curious. Does Hawks still have that plushie lying around somewhere in this house? I am genuinely curious if he still has that plushie or not. Either way, man, he says that there's still that. That they're, that they're still a lot of um, loose ends they need to tie up first, starting with his origins, and then Endeavor needs help. Now, one other thing that was interesting about this during this section of the episode with Hawks is that we get another flashback to, I'm assuming when Hawks first started saving people, because we see Hawks with his, he's like carrying like this bag, and he's firing off his wings everywhere as you see this massive like car collision going on there, as I'm assuming he's trying to save the passengers of these cars. That's always what it looks like to me. I could be wrong that one. Oh, for I know he's trying to kill these people, but I'm pretty sure it looks like he was trying to save these people that were in this collision. But yeah, I, I would like to know the full story about that scene, though. No, that, that scene kind of has me intrigued. Anyway, after after that, we're back to Best Genius and Hawks, I guess, I guess, patrolling this city inside the Batmobile. As we start to see that criminals, that the criminals are starting to overrun the city. It's honestly starting to look more like Gotham City. Honestly, as we see like these, as we see these panic shots of villains terrorizing people, robbing businesses and such. As Hawks says, the urban areas are in a state of panic, and and that with of course the uh, with of course the rumors of no moves and the first hand sightings of those, they have been gnawing the depths of mind and just adding on to the frustration on the same building, and it just couldn't be held back any longer. So then we cut over to like this one guy, one of the prison escapees, a man by Cinder House, and is breaking into like what seems to be like some sort of like food shop, be like, hey, give me some food and money or whatever. But then this I thought was pretty cool, honestly, where we see the people who are no longer relying on heroes start to take matters into their own hands and actually start using support devices to try to defeat the villains. But it came at a cost. And I thought this was and I thought this was Ingenious by Horikoshi, where we where the, where Hot Wash's lot is running over to the scene as she and she got some report about like you know that there's a first assignment of, of one of these gay prisoners. All heroes in the area need to get over there as soon as possible. We see that what happened was people who gave up on the heroes and protected themselves, Assad to protect themselves, Assad to protect themselves, this is once again narrated from Hawks, said that armed civilians without any training in combat against villains 
all it did was cause even more damage and just spread the damage to other areas as well as we get this wide panic. So I'm like, once again, the storyboard in this episode was also really good again. I know I haven't really mentioned that much in this episode like I did in previous episodes, but this shot was really well done when we pan out and we just see the destruction in front of us of the villain and all of the civilians that tried to feed him using support devices that they didn't know how to use with absolutely zero training. I thought this was a genius by Hodokoshi to have the people try to defend themselves, but all they do is just make it even worse with the support device because they have no idea how to use them. It's a lose-lose situation, man. I thought that was a genius. So, then, of course, once Hosh Wash gets over there, you got Sophia throwing pans at her, at her, and be like, where were you? We couldn't leave our house because of this. We were, we couldn't leave our house. We said to cry. What were you doing, Wash? So, Wash ends up, opens up like a washing a door. I have no idea how this woman's quirk works. Uh, just to defect the injury, to defect the injury, take them to a hospital. And we see that more people, they don't want this smoke. They do not They do not want this smoke anymore as the number nine hero uh, decides that he's going to retire after all this. And and, it like, and everyone's like throwing books and like recording devices as, as he leaves. You even hear one guy say, you damn old man, I was a fan of you too. You're just, you're, you're just resigning. You're just avoiding responsibility. We start, we see a trash, what looks to be a trash can with, I'm assuming a hero costume inside a la Spider-Man no more. Although I would love to see if Horticoshi ever goes on full on with that where we see like maybe like Izuku or another character straight up like put their hero costume in a trash can and walk away from it like in Spider-Man No Way Home, Spider-Man No, uh, Spider-Man No More. That would be awesome if we ever got a shot like that in Hero Honor, and that would be legendary. We then, as as uh, Hawks continues on with the narrative saying that people took Mike Peace for, for granted, we see Stain come in there and grab his sword. Ooh! Bro, the hero killers bitch. No, it's actually kind of funny because you guys know I mentioned in my react in my review last week that I was hyped that Overhaul got a cameo. Y'all know I didn't mention Stain because I didn't recognize that was Stain. I love that the one character Bones doesn't give the gra the little title card graphic for what they are is the one character I don't recognize. <laughs> but yeah, Stain is back. Hopefully that means we'll maybe see him and Izuku have a rematch in villain in the uh, in the vigilante arc or, or villain hunt, whatever the fuck it's called. I'm hoping that we that Stay does have a role in that arc, uh, and we maybe see Izuku and him have a have a rematch of sword. Man, either way, that shot of him when he like lifts his sword up, man. Oh, bro, that shot's awesome. And once again, shout out to the storyboard artist, the key animator, of course, Hortikoshi himself. And and then Hawks continues on saying that people have put the responsibility of all of that on the shoulders of one man as we cut over to Endeavor. And the doctor tells him that he's fine, which also gotta say, first of all, this doctor has like a mushroom like head on him, which I swear to God this has to be like a Mario reference because you know the toads and everything. I don't know if it is or not, but it looks like it probably could be. But anyway, he tells him that everyone's fine, Todoroki's fine, you somehow escaped us, and then as he leaves he says he's at, uh, that he's rooting for him. Now, one thing I also gotta say real quick is that the key animation and the storyboarding during this last section of the episode was amazing. Like, this is where the, the storyboarding really shined in this episode, man. There were so many amazing shots, and the key animation was great. Like, but like right now, we got a shot of Endeavor as he looks over the city. His hat is like, his, his reflection is in the glass. It looks amazing. It says, I can breathe. My head feels fuzzy. The anesthetics are still, work, are still working. We get another extremely amazing key animated shot of, of Endeavor as he says, I am alive. And he leans back in his chair, says he says, Toyo thought, knew that I wouldn't that I would survive that fight. We get more flashbacks to two Dobby's dads as Endeavor just stands there completely frozen at what's going on with it with 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 Dobby. And it's the same as that time with Natsu. When his son was when his son was in danger, he just froze. Now we then get this shot of Best Genius, which looks like to me like a flashback to when he was like first started being a pro hero given his outfit. I have no idea what Endeavor's talk about here. I don't know if this is from an earlier episode, if um, and I just completely forgot it, and I just completely forget about forgot about it. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but he says even when I was even when Best GC to disapprove a part, dis disapprove part of what he'd say, the truth could not be dis the truth could not be dis could not be disproven. But this I also thought was pretty cool when they like zoom in on the TV and he says the truth could not be disproven where it like glitches out and switches over to Dobby's um to Dobby's like a video when he was like, you know, announced the world that endeavors and that is a wife beating child abusing son of a bitch, you know, that whole thing. And Endeavor continues on, but apparently I'm a failure and I and I was abandoned and forgot. We then get another we get another, get another shot to what I'm assuming is Toya 
when his hair had could turn completely white. It looks like he's like ripping out his hair. There's tears in his eyes. I assume he's probably freaking out how his hair is like completely changed, completely changed colors from red to white. Hopefully, but it looks like we'll probably get some more expl explanation of this in the in the next episode. It looks like probably. And so he continues on saying that the hero Endeavor has died. I cannot fight my own son as he starts crying. And the voice acting here. Oh my god, bro. The voice acting from Endeavor's Japanese VA. You know this episode's gonna get the double reaction because I need this because you know Patrick is gonna kill this as well when this gets done as well. And of course also Hawk session as well. And my god, his voice acting there where he says I can't fight my own son. It's just amazing, bro. And I also love how they changed up his voice a little bit when he has like the mask on. He sounds like Darth Vader a little bit, which I don't know, maybe that was done on purpose if you don't want to go she loves Star Wars. I don't know, but either way, I like the sound of it, man. And one other thing I gotta say real quick before I continue on. Endeavor's development has easily been one of the best parts of Hirawaka in these last couple of seasons. And it still just baffles me that people were sending Horikoshi death threats over this shit, man. But that's the Hirawaka fandom for you. Anyway, as he's crying his eyes out, we see... <laughs> No, I think we all were caught by surprise by this one. We see Todoroki absolutely flabbergasted at what he's seeing as he's like, Dad? <laughs> and then he looks over to them and then he closes the door. <laughs> no, like, this seems like... I feel like this is MCU-type comedy done right, because you guys know that if you guys watch my Shang-Chi review, like, my one problem I have movie is that... I've never been one that really had a problem with MCU type comedy. I've always really enjoyed it. I just didn't really have a, or really didn't have any um, thoughts on it or other. But there was one time where it did ruin a scene, which was in Shang Chi, when uh, he was like, when Shang -Chi, when Shang Chi was telling us about his backstory, and then the you know flight tennis is like would like beef for it was like beef for chicken or whatever the fuck it was, and then they just keep the joke going on for way too goddamn long, and it just kind of and it almost just kind of ruins the scene, like. That's what the one time MCU type did ruin a scene. This one I feel like was Horikoshi doing it right, man. But either way, <laughs> he then lead, he then like he, he then pushes up the chair back up as he screams out Shoto. And once again, the key animation here is amazing. As you see, uh, as you say, Fuyumi, Todoroki, and Natsu, and. Natsu is asking him what he's crying about. He says he's sorry. I'm so sorry as he's crying his eyes out some more. We get another amazing shot of Fuyumi and Todoroki. Like I said, the key animation here really was really fucking good. This is where the key animation and the storyboard really show for this episode. As he continues on, my regret, now my guilt, my heart. And then Ray comes in there. Todoroki's mom. Bro, y'all see this in the reaction. When I saw her... Bro, I lost my goddamn mind. I'm like, oh shit, shit's about to go down, bro. Shit's about to get real. She asked him, what about your heart? Regret and guilt. We all felt it much more than you do. <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong to be fair. I mean, <laughs> but damn. And of course, Endeavor is shocked by the fact that she is here. He is obviously asking what she's doing here. And she's here to talk about her family and Toya. And that is where the episode ends. Bro, y'all see this in the reaction? I was so salty when the episode ended here, bro. Right when it was gonna get good, right when we got to the good shit, they ended the episode off leaving you on that cliffhanger, bro. I hate it when they do that shit, man. It always, it always triggers me. But either way, man, this episode is fucking amazing, man. Hawks' backstory was amazing. Uh, the section with Endeavor was incredible, man. I've loved how, once again, uh, Horikoshi Sensei has been adding on to the to the to the downfall of Hero Society. Those have always been like some of my favorite parts of Hero Walk in these recent seasons. It's seen the cracks in Hero Society start to show up, man. It's been great shit, man. And yeah. Next week we know is a banger. I mentioned before how one of the that the that the guy that's been doing all the key visuals for Hero Walk is gonna be one of the key animators of that episode. And from the next episode preview, bro, it looks like it's gonna be pretty insane when we can learn more about Toya, Natsu, and you know, Todoroki and everything, man. Oh, it's gonna be so good, man. I can't wait for that episode next week, man. It's gonna be legendary, man. Anyway, guys, that's where this video off. Overall, I'm going to give this episode 9.5 out of 10, guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on my social media if you feel like it. Links down in the description box below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.